Hello friends, welcome back to Wawaiyas. Welcome to the discussion on daily MCQ. Today is 28th of January 2022 and now we are going to discuss 5 MCQs based on the current affairs. So let's start. But first, before going into the question, just a small information. The PDF of the discussion will be available in our Telegram channel. You can go and download it from there. The Telegram channel details are there in the description. You can just click the link and go and download from there. Or else, you can go to your Telegram and in the search box, type WAWIAS. The channel already has more than 12,000 members. So you can directly join it, get the document from there. Now let's quickly begin. The first question, Corruption Perception Index CPI is published by which of the following organizations? A. OECD B. World Economic Forum C. Transparency International and D. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation You have to choose the correct option and the correct option is C. Transparency International According to a new report by the Transparency International, India's rank improved one place to 85 among the 180 countries in the Corruption Perception Index of 2021. The index ranks 180 countries and the territories by the perceived level of public sector corruption according to the experts and business people. It uses a scale of 0, which is highly corrupt, to 100, very clean. So among those with the lowest scores, some of the world's most popular, popular countries like China at 45, India at 40, and other economies like Indonesia at 38, Pakistan at 28, Bangladesh at 26. India's rank improved by one place to 85 in 2021 from 86 in 2020 according to this index and except Bhutan, all India's neighbors are ranked below it. Pakistan dropped 16 places in the index and was ranked at 140. The countries uh, that have fared well are Denmark, Finland and New Zealand. They are the top three. So each with a score of about 88 followed by Norway. So these are top three countries. And uh, the top three are uh, Denmark, Finland and New Zealand. They have a score of 88 and they are followed by Norway of, with 85, Singapore with uh, 85, Nor Sweden with 85, Switzerland with 84, Netherlands 82, Luxembourg 81 and Japan 80. So these are the scores. And the least countries, if you see, the least scoring countries, South Sudan, Syria, Somalia with scores of 11, 13, 13 remain at the bottom of the index. Okay. Now let's move on to the next question. The second question. Consider the following statements regarding the CVC Chief Vigilance Commission. First one, the CVC was set up in February 1964 on the recommendation of the Sarkaria Commission. Second one, it is an independent body which is only responsible to the parliament. Third one, CVC submits its yearly report to the CBI director. You have to choose the correct option A1 and 3, B2, C1 only and D1, 2 and 3. First statement is wrong because the Sarkaria, sorry, the CVC was set up on the recommendation of Santanam committee. That is the main thing. It is, uh, <coughs> sorry, it was on the recommendation of Santanam committee. So first statement is wrong. And second statement, if you see, it says that it is an independent body which is responsible to the parliament. This is the right statement. Third statement says, CVC submits its yearly report to the CBI director. Why any independent body will submit its report to the CBI director? Generally, if it is an independent body, it has to submit to the either president or parliament. So the third statement is also wrong. Correct option is B2 only. Recently, CVC has modified the criteria for nomination of independent external monitors in the government bodies. That's why CVC was in use. And this modification came months after it has issued a revised standards operating procedure for the adoption and implementation of the integrity pact clause which is meant to prevent corruption in the public procurement. The CVC basically is an independent body which is formed in 1964 on the recommendation of Santanam Committee. It was accorded the statutory status in 2003 by the CVC Act and is responsible to the parliament and submits its yearly report to the President of India. So recently this integrity pact which was launched by CVC, it envisages an agreement between the prospective vendor and the buyer committing persons and officials on both sides to not to resort to any corrupt practices in any stage or aspect of the contract. Any violation in the clause entails the disqualification of the bidder and exclusion from the future business dealings. Okay. So CVC composition, if you see, it is a multi-member body consisting of chairperson, the CVC, and not more than two vigilance commissioners. So C plus two. That is the composition. Now let's move on to the next question. The third question. Consider the following statements regarding the Najafgarh Lake. First one. Najafgarh Jeel is a transboundary wetland located along the borders of Delhi and Haryana. Second one, <coughs> the lake is fed by Krishnavati River. 
we have to choose the correct option a one only b2 only c both one and two and d neither one not two so the correct option is a one only is the correct answer because this lake is not fed by the krishnavati river rather it is a to certain extent it is rain fed and also it is fed by other uh, you can say the waste that come into the the waste that that, that is generated by the surrounding places so recently the ngt has directed delhi and haryana government to enforce the environment management plan so that the two governments can prepare for the rejuvenation and protection of the najafgarh jhil which is a transboundary wetland najafgarh lake fed by the sahibi river okay so it is remember this is fed by sahibi river it's a vast lake in the southwest delhi it is connected to yamuna by a narrow shallow nala called the najafgarh nala the presence of 281 bird species including several threatened like the egyptian vultures saurus crane steppe eagle the greater spotted eagle imperial eagle and those migrating along the central asian flyway has been reported in this lake it is the second largest wetland in delhi after the yamuna second largest water body not wetland second largest water body the lake is largely filled with sewage from gurgram and uh, surrounding villages the rajavgarh jhil is transported wetland and is located along the borders of delhi and haryana okay and the plan which is directed by the ngp sorry ngt aims to rejuvenate the najafgarh jhil now let's move on to the fourth question consider the following statements regarding isro's small satellite launch vehicle first one it is smallest launch vehicle and can carry satellites weighing up to 15000 kg to a geosynchronous transfer orbit second one sslv is a three stage all solid vehicle you have to choose the correct option a1 only b2 only c both one and two and d neither one not two the correct option is b2 only because as sslv the small satellite launch vehicle can launch satellites up to 500 kg and not 15000 kg normally the pslv the polar satellite launch vehicle will generally carry weights up to 1000 kg so if pslv is carrying 1000 kg then sslv should carry less than 1000 kg that is the logic so sslv is for satellites weighing up to 500 kg it can take to the polar orbit okay that is the lower orbit recently isro isro chairman has mentioned the launch of sslv d1 microsat in april 2022 this sslv a small satellite launch vehicle aims to cater to the needs of the market you can say that uh, it aims to it cater to the needs of the market as the market in the market we are seeing satellites of less than 500 kg that is means small satellites okay so in this small vehicle category of 1 ton of 110 ton <coughs> it is a small vehicle category of 101 ton and it takes only 72 hours to integrate unlike 70 days for the the pslv it can carry satellites up to 500 kg to low earth orbit and it uh, and uh, normally 300 kg to the sun synchronous orbit okay so some more information extra information is given here you can just pause and go through all these things now let's move on to the next question the fifth question satyamangalam tiger reserve recently awarded with the prestigious t into 2 award is located in a karnataka b meghalaya sorry b maharashtra c telangana and d tamil nadu the correct option we have to choose and here the correct option is d tamil nadu satyamangalam tiger reserve is in tamil nadu so recently the satyamangalam tiger reserve has been awarded the prestigious t22 award after its tiger number doubled since 2010 satyamangalam tiger reserve the bhartiya national park in nepal has won this year's t22 award for doubling the population of the wild tiger since 2010 Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve is located in the Western Ghats in the Eero district of Tamil Nadu spread across 1409 square kilometers and declared tiger reserve and it was declared as tiger reserve in 2013 and is home to about 80 tigers with 724 tigers the nilgiri biosphere landscape uh, that satyamangalam tiger reserve is part of is currently the home to the largest tiger population of the world adjoining forest areas like eero forest division coimbatore division the malai the malai mahadeshwara wildlife sanctuary are also emerging as the important tiger habitats creating a mosaic that allows the big cats to easily move in search of food and new territory there are 52 tiger reserves in india okay so this is all the information so before i leave a small information guys you can subscribe to vision monthly magazines from jan 2021 to may 2022 at just rupees 499 okay so this subscription you can uh, take from our telegram channel only 
we are also providing prelims sorry vision prelims test series summary these summaries will help you in your revision they will ensure that you cover maximum minimum minimum time and also they will help you in your revision so you can subscribe to these summaries at just rupees 999 the summary of vision prelims test series 2022 okay if you have any queries and all you can just get back to us via telegram or via comments okay so that's it friends from our side i'll see you again tomorrow with five more mcqs till then keep studying and stay tuned jai hind